The theistic philosopher Martin Buber is most well known for his book I and Thou. And by most well known, I mean you probably haven't heard of him. On the other hand, you might know Erich Fromm's ideas about being versus having. Martin Buber's ideas are quite similar and also existentialist in nature. Either way, the essence of his work is that there are two distinct ways to address people. Depending upon the mode that we are in, reality, or at least our version of reality, changes. The two modes are namely the I it mode and the I thou or I you mode. The first mode is the dichotomy of I it. In this mode, we see people as an it. We see them for a very practical purpose, a means to an end. For example, you could have friends just because they provide fun and help if you need or want it. Generally, this mode is rooted in the past. We define people as the collection of information that we accumulated about them throughout the years. We reduce them down to a very specific tiny set of features. A rock has a specific weight, size and shape. In the IIT mode, we see other people as objects, just like rocks. The only difference is that humans, with their manifold characteristics, occasionally are a little bit more complex than rocks. Contrary to the I it mode, we have the I thou or I you mode, in which we are not focused on the utility of an individual, but rather on seeing them fully and not as a collection of attributes. As soon as we reduce an individual down to anything less than the full, f full extent of what they are, we move into the I it mode. Inevitably, the I thou or I you mode is also linked to the present moment and not to the past. Instead of waiting for your turn to speak because you so urgently need a favor, you actually see them for who they are, listen and appreciate the interaction the two of you are having. In both the I it and the I thou, the I inevitably leads to either an it or a thou and these respectively lead to the I. There's no I without an it or without an thou. After all, if an individual or rock is perceived, then there has to be a perceiver. And if there is someone perceiving, then there need to be separate entities that can be perceived. This might seem quite abstract and unimportant, but it is crucial to understand. While both I it and I thou require separate entities, there still remains a subtle difference, and that is the distance between perceiver and perceived. In the I it mode, the I is pretty far away from the object, which seems logical, since we are quite different from rocks. Now, if you look at another human, you are a lot closer to them, even in the I it mode, simply because there is more similarity between two humans than there is between a human and a rock. Except if you're the rock, that complicates things. Now, if that individual is a close friend, a spouse or a relative, then the distance decreases once again. Because you either see more similarities or because you two are more intimate, not physically, but psychologically. In the I thou mode, this distance reaches its minimum. The I thou mode is not like other philosophies in which everything is united. Instead, there remain two separate entities that nevertheless are pretty close to each other. Think of two raindrops running down a car window. If they get too close, they merge and become one. But if they keep just enough distance, they can exist next to each other, with just a small gap between them. This is quite different from the IIT mode, in which we are, psychologically speaking, quite far away from the IT. But it is also different from becoming one with everything since that little distance is maintained. We do not lose ourselves in these I thou moments, but neither do we see each other from a cold distance. Most of our lives are defined by the I it mode, since it is quite literally the practical mode that we use to achieve our goals. However, the I thou mode is what many people crave. I thou is not a permanent state of mind. For a lot of people, it's just a very rare phenomenon. For others, it's a little more frequent, but even for those, it is still just temporary. For practical reasons, we just spoke about person-to-person -person or person-to-object relations. However, according to Buber, the I-thou relationship stands at the core 
of growth, creativity and spirituality, as in these moments, the so to speak distance also decreases. In the religious sense, you are not becoming unified with God, but rather experience God, whatever that may mean for you, fully and you are quite close to him or her. In that way, Buba does not define spirituality as a set of actions that you need to take, beliefs to have, or times that you attend a church. Instead, spirituality depends on how you relate to pretty much everything and everyone around you. If you go through life and frequently have I thou moments, then you might live a more spiritual life than a priest who just objectifies God. If your faith is based on the support, guidance and meaning that God is supposedly giving you, then this seems like an I-it relation and not an I-thou relation. To ground it in more practical terms, to ground it in physical reality. If you see a painting or beauty at large for what it is in an I-thou manner, then you are much closer to it than even the wealthiest collector who judges a painting merely by its date, artist and price tag. You can create a competition around art or you can monetize creativity and we see that a lot these days. But this objectifying perspective brings us out of touch with everything around us. It might be practical for our goals, but it creates distance and separates us from life itself. Another very interesting theistic existentialist thinker is Søren Kierkegaard. He has a playlist about his ideas. A huge thanks to Eli Z, David Rose, Robert Kempf and Gerald Jones II for continuously supporting me on Patreon. I truly appreciate it.